Dr. Chung from Hospital Dentistry. I'm one of the pediatric dentists here at Walter Reed. And hello, my name is Lieutenant Whitbeck. I'm from the Nutrition Services Department and I'm a dietetic intern here at Walter Reed. We are here today to talk to you about pediatric dental health. In this presentation, we're going to go over the importance of dental health for children, risk factors for cavities, and establishing a dental home. We're also going to go over how to practice good oral hygiene with your child and discuss dental and nutritional habits to achieve optimal dental health. Let's go over why it is important to take care of your child's teeth. Poor oral health can affect a child's growth and development to include eating, speaking, playing, and learning. Having to take time off of school, having tooth pain, or being self-conscious can negatively affect the childhood experience. Don't the teeth just fall out anyways, you may be thinking? Ideally, yes, but they're supposed to be there to help your child to chew and talk for a certain number of years. They hold space for the big teeth to come in. If for some reason they come out early due to cavities or trauma, there could be space loss that alters or prevents the permanent teeth from coming in. According to the data from the National Institutes of Health, more than 25% of preschool children ages 2 to 5 and 50% of school-aged children aged 5 through 11 have tooth decay. These percentages are alarming and indicate a need to improve the dental health of children in the U.S. Risk factors for dental caries describes activities that put your child at risk for developing cavities. By assessing your child's risk, we can determine dental and nutritional behaviors to maintain or improve their oral health. The recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, as well as the American Academy of Pediatrics, recommends the first visit as early as the first tooth erupts, around six months old and no later than the child's first birthday. At this visit, the dentist will cover several topics to include risk assessment for cavities, oral hygiene and how much fluoride toothpaste to use, dietary recommendations, pacifiers, thumb sucking, what to do in the event of trauma, and what to expect as more teeth begin to erupt. Cavities can occur as soon as there is a tooth to form a cavity on. Fluoride toothpaste, when used as directed, is still our best tool to prevent cavities. Another risk factor for dental caries includes active caries. Because cavities is an infectious, communicable disease, all family members should strive for optimal dental health. Nutritional risk factors for dental caries include food insecurity. Food insecurity means that an individual has limited access to sufficient, healthy, safe, and affordable food. Frequency of sugary beverages and foods increases the amount of time that sugar sits on your child's teeth. A cavity equals the teeth plus sugar plus bacteria plus time. The longer sugary substances sit on teeth, the longer the teeth are in a danger zone. Brush your child's teeth twice a day, especially at night right before bedtime. We wouldn't want to leave any food souvenirs overnight when our protective saliva flow is low. If the teeth are touching, nightly flossing will help this as well. Your dentist can demonstrate the best techniques and give best tips on proper oral hygiene. Nutrition habits to follow for good dental health include eating foods high in calcium and vitamin D for strong healthy teeth, limiting the frequency of sugary snacks and drinks, avoiding risky eating behaviors, and reaching out for resources if you are having difficulty accessing food. Increase the amount of water in your child's diet and limit the number of sugary beverages and snacks between meals. Avoid bottle or sippy cup use at bedtime for infants and toddlers to prevent decay from sitting on your child's teeth and gums overnight. Avoid risky behaviors like eating non-food items or ice, biting your fingernails, grinding your teeth, and clenching your jaw to prevent damage to your child's teeth and gums. It would be silly to start learning about using sunscreen after you got sunburn, right? The same is true for dentistry. Prevention is far less time consuming, expensive, and uncomfortable than having to go in for actual treatment. Thank you for listening to this presentation about your child's oral health. For additional resources, please check out the following academies and keep a lookout for the Pediatric Dentistry FAQ site on the Walter Reed home site.